Hello Nidorinas and Nidorinos and welcome to Spikeman City and welcome to the rivalry round where the Spikeman Devils are hosting their rivals the Olive Iron Ore and the Ore is starting out with Bronzon and Excavalier whereas Bishop and Pangoro are starting out with the Spikeman Devils. Now let us know in the comments below who you think is going to win today. The amazingly dominant Olive Iron Ore or the unfortunately inconsistent Spike McDevils. I'm just being honest, that is how they've been this season. But Bishop's going to start out with the speed advantage on the field at the moment. And it's going to go with a superpower. And this should be super effective on the Steel types. And it goes for a Scavalier. Decent hit. Sorry, not super effective, but it will lower Bishop's defense and attack. Pangoro now with its turn. So the Spike McDevils having all the speed at the moment goes with the struggle bug. Hitting both Scavalier and Bronzong, getting Scavalier down into the yellow as it also lowers Bronzong's special attack. Also does the same there to a Scavalier, now Bronzong with its opportunity. Is the Olivine always opportunity to respond? It goes with a mist, so it doesn't actually go for an offensive type attack. Instead, it just makes its own team shrouded in mist. Now a Scavalier has its opportunity. One of the slowest Pokemon in the entire Elite Challenge League, and it's going to go with a spatial rend. Goes for Pangoro, and it doesn't do much damage to the Dark Fighting type, but as I was saying, a Scavalier has that 20 base speed. Now, as always, this is a 6 on 6 metronome battle, and if we hit the 20 minute time limit, we will go into single battle overtime. Now, that Leer from Bishop will fail. Pangoro looking to back its teammate up, though. Goes with a Sandstorm. So, this is actually going to hinder Pangoro. Everyone else on the field will not be affected by the Sandstorm because everyone else on the field at the moment has that steel typing, even Bishop, who's on the dark team. Seed Bomb now, coming from Bronzong. Targeting Bishop. Decent hit for a not very effective move. Scavalier now with its chance. And it's going to go with an Iron Tail. Bishop avoids that attack, and Pangoro takes advantage from the Sandstorm that it just started. Now, these two teams' rivals as their first ever occurrence started in the Johto region, and it has continued to today, as they both have been around for as long as each other, and that rivalry has just built and continued. Now, Bishop switches its speed with Bronzong, which is fantastic for Bronzong, slowing down Bishop, and it's going to go with an extra sensory, but it won't affect the Dark type Bishop, as the Dark types are immune to Psychic type attacks. And we're going to get an eruption from Pangora. This will be super effective. And it hits both a Scavalier and Bronzog. And a Scavalier has been eliminated by that eruption. Amazing hit there by Pangoro. As it takes more damage from that Sandstorm. We have a third Pokemon now come out for the Olivine Ore. And it's going to be Duraludon, the Dragon Steel type. Now the Olivine Ore had a clean sweep last week. A very impressive showing over the Viridian Fissure. The now, they're clearly not going to have that today, but they want to continue that domination. They are seven wins in a row, as we see another confusion not take effect as Duraludon tries its turn. Now, Aromatherapy coming from Bronzong, but will fail. So now all the speed advantage is on the side of the Olivine Ore, as we get a Bubble Beam coming from Pangoro, targeting Duraludon. Now, that actually did more damage than I would have expected for, from that Water-type attack. And we're going to get a Prismatic Laser coming from Bishop. It will be charging, recharging on the next turn. But gets Duraludon down into the yellow with that not very effective move. And Pangoro continues to take damage. But as I was saying, all of all, seven games in a row. Their winning streak actually started in round three when they beat the Spike Myth Devils that week. So this is the second matchup this year between the Spike Myth Devils and the all of all, as Duraludon goes with the clanging scales. Hits both Bishop and Pangoro and takes Pangoro down into the red, but it holds on. As Duraludon's defense is lowered after that clanging in scales. Bronzong has the opportunity to finish it off Pangoro, but goes with a topsy turvy, which will fail. Pangoro now goes with the spikes. So it's going to throw the spikes onto the side of the Olive Ore, and anyone who comes out for their team now will be inflicted by those spikes unless they're levitating or flying. There's that sandstorm chipping away still at Pangoro. I have to think this will be Pangoro's last turn in this battle, as everyone else is currently in the yellow health. They're below 50%. Duraludon could actually finish off Pangoro here, and it goes with the Dragon Darts, and it will, so Pangoro is eliminated, and the second Dragon Dart is going to hit Bishop. A very impressive hit there for a not very effective move, again from Duraludon. Bronzong here with its opportunity to solely target Bishop, but instead goes with a defense curl, so it's going to boost its defense stats. 
Bronzong already having that 116 base defense, giving that a nice boost. Now Bishop, it's going to go with a block. And it will target Bronzong with that, so Bronzong can no longer escape. But no one will be getting out of this battle. It will finish as that Sandstorm does finish. And we have Crocodile come onto the field for the Spike McDevils, the ground dark type. Now Crocodile is going to have the speed advantage on the field at the moment. See if it can capitalize. Goes with a Flower Shield though. So it does fail. Duraludon now being very well performing in this battle so far. Goes with a Metal Burst, but that also fails. That's two moves in a row that have failed on this turn. Now Bronzong goes with a Fake Tear, so it's not going to go for an offensive type move. Instead it targets Bishop, lowering its special defense. Now Bishop has its opportunity. And it's going to go with the Supersonic, so it's just hoping to leave someone confused targeting Bronzong. So Bronzong will be left with the confusion, it needs to shake that off. Now all the final as I said, have been so dominant this season. They have an 8-1 record, they've been beaten once. That was in round 2, so they're going to want to look to continue that today. Whereas the Spikeman Devils are currently sitting 12th, and they've been they had a very slow start this season. They've built a little bit of momentum, but they're trying so hard to get into that top 8. They almost got there recently, but they have not quite gotten there. As Duraludon goes with a psych up. So it copies the stat changes that Bishop has. And Bronzong does shake off that confusion. And now it's going to go with an Electro Web. It's not going to affect Crocodile due to its ground typing, but it will hit Bishop and it finishes it off. So Bishop has been eliminated and the Olivine all have taken the lead in this battle. This is a position we are very used to seeing them in throughout this season. As Weavile, the Ice Dark type, comes onto the field for the Spike and Devils. Weavile is going to have a massive speed advantage on this battlefield. And it's going to go with a blue flare, so this will be super effective. Targeting Bronzong and it'll finish it off. So Bronzong has been eliminated, so the battle is all tied up now with four Pokemon remaining on both sides. Crocodile has an opportunity to target Duraludon solely. And it goes with a Dragon Pulse, this will also be super effective. And it's a massive hit, eliminating Duraludon, and the Spike with Devils have taken back the lead. Very impressive response there. Good teamwork there by Weavile and Crocodile on this battlefield. As we have Copperaja come out for the Olive Iron Ore. And it's about to be joined by Kling Clang. So it's now 3 versus 4. The advantage going to the Spike with Devils. As Copperaja is hurt by those spikes, as is Kling Clang. So they've already taken damage on this battle. We've all again that speed advantage is still gonna be on the side of Spike with Devils. And it goes with a Mega Drain. Targeting Copper Raja doesn't do a great deal of damage, however. Crocodile looks to follow up its teammate. And goes with a flip turn. So he targets Kling Clang, gets a good hit in there, and now it's gonna go back to the bench. So we're gonna have. The fifth Pokemon come out for the Spikeman Devils, and it's Incineroar. Incineroar's fire type is gonna, should have a massive advantage for the Spikeman Devils if it can capitalize and get some fire type attacks off. Cling Clang now. It's going to go with a Floral Healing, which would have helped the Spikeman Devils, but already at full health is Incineroar. Now we get a Dragon Dance coming from Copperaja, so it's just going to look to boost its own stats here. And it's Copperaja boosting its attack and its speed. We've all still should be the quickest on the field, you have to imagine, and it is. And it's going to go with a pluck. So it's going to be taking Kling Kling's Leperberry from it. Not very effective, but it does steal it. It does eat that Leperberry right in front of Kling Kling. We've all be a very renowned thief if it wanted to be. Now Kling Kling goes with an Electro Web. We have already seen this move, except this time it will hit both opposing Pokemon. And even gets that critical hit there on Weavile, and lowers that amazing speed stat, as well as lowering Incineroar is in the process. Copperaja now. Goes with a Lunar Dance, so Copperaja is eliminating itself from this battle. This is terrible for the Olivine Ore. Copperaja is out of here. So the Olivine Ore are down to only two Pokemon, Incineroar. Could potentially eliminate Kling Kling if it can get off a fire type move, but instead goes with a Kinesis. So it's not going for an offensive type attack. 
Instead, it just lowers Clinkling's accuracy. The last Pokemon now coming out for the Olivine Ore. And it's Ferrothorn, the Grass Steel type. This is exactly where Incineroar needs to go for a Fire type move. Capitalize on that stab boost it would get being a Fire type. Clinkling now with the speed advantage on the field. Goes with an Aqua Jet. Targets Weavile, would have been better off targeting Incineroar there. Now Weavile has that opportunity to respond and goes with a triple kick. There's the first kick. There's the second, even stronger. And there's the third, and Kling Clang holds on from that super effective triple kick. Incineroar could finish it off here if it can just get an offensive type attack out. And it's going to go with a Howl, so it won't get off an offensive move. Instead, it's going to boost its attack stat as well as Weavile's, but they need to capitalize on this. Ferrothorn now with its opportunity. And Ferrothorn's going with a Misty Explosion. Unbelievable. And the Olive Iron Ore's win streak has come to an end because of themselves. They took out three of their own team. They took out half of their team and the Spike Devils have been able to capitalize with a four Pokemon victory. Unbelievable. What was Ferrothorn doing? The other one was win streak is over. And the Spike Devils are the benefactors of that. That is, I can't, I am so, so I cannot believe that's how that ended. They won a clean sweep last week and they have taken out half their own team this week. But well done to the Spike and Devils, not to take anything away from them, that blue flare from Weavile. Fantastic looking move. I followed up immediately by Crocodile eliminating Duraludon. So they had all the momentum regardless in this battle. And they're going to want to look to continue that next week when they host the Vile Stone Combat again here in Spike Myth City. But that Lunar Dance and then a Misty Explosion, the Olive Vinyl will be so frustrated. Next week, they're hosting the Cinnabar Flare in Olivine City. They're going to want to look to redeem themselves because that is so unbelievably disappointing. Ferrothorn took itself out, took out Kling Klang. Spikeman Devils get the four points with that victory. This is huge as they try and get into the eight. But Nidorinos, Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below who you thought was the best on field today. And always remember, you are awesome, and I will speak to you next time.